Good morning, everybody. Um, just welcoming you to the uh, Edge Computing World uh, webinar on seven key challenges for uh, edge computing. We're just gathering people at the moment, so I'll, I'll just uh, keep the uh, keep quiet for a, a few minutes. But if you will probably be starting at two or three minutes past the hour, so you probably have time to grab a glass of water if you're if you've just joined. Thanks very much. Morning, everybody. Just to let you know that we're still just uh, gathering, so I'll, I'll be starting the webinar uh, proper in uh, a minute or two. Uh, you just have some time to, to get comfortable before we make the full start. So good morning, everybody. Um, well, good morning to those of you on uh, here on the West Coast. Uh, uh, good evening to those of you in Europe. And uh, I guess happy lunchtime to anyone on the East Coast. Um, thanks for joining us uh, on our webinar today. Uh, it's one of our series of uh, weekly webinars focusing on, on edge computing. Um, so this uh, webinar is hosted by Edge Computing World, which is uh, part of uh, Topia Networks, uh, the industry catalyst for emerging tech. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so just to briefly introduce you uh, to, to Topio. Um, so Topio Networks is, uh, is uh, an open source um, provider of business information. And uh, I'm just, uh, just walking you through the, uh, the history of uh, how you might know us and, uh, and what we've been doing over the last few years. So. Uh, I mean, we, we came into uh, addressing the market uh, back in 2015 when the, we were addressing a, a lot of interest around the wearables market and uh, the brand uh, that we have that you'll be familiar from uh, around that point is, is Red White Labs. Um, and we still uh, have a community of over 60,000 people uh, in that space who are addressing uh, wearables and as that developed uh, into IoT uh, we still address IoT, AI, smart home, uh, connectivity, and have an active community of around 400,000 people in that space. More recently, um, with the changes in infrastructure that underpin IoT, we've also launched the uh, Edge Computing World community. And we have about 120,000 people engaged in that community. Um, for instance, through our weekly newsletter, which goes out at Edge Essentials, which I edit. And uh, we also have a focus on distributed apps. And so, you know, we see that uh, with the move to edge computing, the way architecture is going to be distributed, well, that also is going to require a change in the, in the nature of applications. And uh, we're also looking very strongly at distributed apps and blockchain, distributed just technology underpinning all of that space. And we have a very active technology around that area. Next slide, please. So, um, 
Well, how do we how do we actually bring these communities together? And what are we doing um, to to help accelerate the market? Well, we see ourselves providing content, uh, context, and and uh, and connections. Um, so we do that in, in a variety of ways, um, and we like to think of ourselves as helping you surf the wave of innovation uh, that's uh, taking place in the in the market. So um, every every uh, new technology cycle is a, is a massive wave of energy in the technology community and we uh, help you to understand what that wave looks like where where you need to how you need to join it how you uh, how you get on top of that wave and then uh, once uh, uh, once you're on top of that wave you, we can help you guide you to the the right place to to uh, use that energy um, and uh, bring your products to the market um, so in terms of uh, context, we're well known for our, our market landscapes and uh, you may be familiar with these as you've seen. The, the, the real interest in the, in the landscapes, um, the real value in the, in the, in the uh, landscapes is actually... Uh, the real value in the landscapes um, is actually when you dig into the, the platform. So. Uh, TopioNetworks.com, we uh, are providing an AI-enabled, uh, human-curated information platform. And uh, with all of the um, 400 companies that we provide uh, in the edge computing uh, world, edge computing uh, industry landscape, for instance, uh, you can dive into all of those companies and compare markets, sub-markets, track deals, um, look at uh, leadership, uh, look at funding, for instance, many other dimensions. Um, and, um, you know, inspired by the, the space of open source that we're talking about today, we're an open access business information provider. So in fact, all of that information you can uh, access for free. We see ourselves as uh, the first um, of uh, the new generation of business information providers in that way. So um, how are we, uh, what else are we doing? Um, so we're actually uh, helping companies to access markets uh, and, and access decision makers within the space. And we have a particular focus around markets and verticals. Um, so through the platform, we can track uh, e exactly uh, where the strengths are, where the hotspots are in, in the market when you look at uh, how technologies and how verticals intersect. In, in deference, deference spots within the market. So uh, next slide, please. So just to introduce myself, that's me on the left, uh, Gavin White I'm the co-founder of Topio and also the Edge Computing World uh, community. Um, but today uh, I'd like to introduce Arpit. Uh, so Arpit Joshikoro is the general manager of open source um, uh, edge and IoT uh, and networking at the Linux Foundation. And uh, we're really uh, excited to have Arpi with us today. He's got a, I mean, it's a really fascinating uh, overview of the uh, edge computing space, the challenges, and, and how the Linux Foundation, LF Edge, is working with it. So Arpi, over to you. Thank you, Gavin. Uh, and thank you all for joining. Uh, as the title says, uh, seven key challenges for edge computing is, uh, is extremely you know, important to all of us as we start, you know, getting into uh, the next generation of, of uh, deployments. So let's kind of go through this and uh, quick overview of the challenges and how we are going to solve them. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar with Linux Foundation, we are here to create uh, you know, obviously a nonprofit, we are here to create a greatest shared technology investment uh, that allows uh, community to build ecosystems and accelerate the deployment of open source. And obviously, Linux is the anchor, uh, you know, decades ago. But we are also in uh, many different areas of security, networking, cloud. You know, we host Kubernetes, for example, automotive, blockchain, edge, IoT, web, etc. Uh, focused primarily on developers uh, and uh, all of our membership base with with a lot of uh, you know, support from from uh, from the global ecosystem here. So that's a quick overview. Obviously, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it, on on this and jump right into the topic. 
So Gavin asked me, you know, what are the seven challenges that we see as we go through uh, the early phases of edge compute? And here's uh, the seven laid out. And I'm going to go into details of each one of those, uh, starting with the obvious one. You know, what is edge? Uh, and I think we have a good solution there. So, you know, I'll bear with me while I go through this. Uh, the second one is really around, you know, multiple heterogeneous technologies are, um, are, are required to help solve the problem of edge compute. Uh, so how do they fit together? Uh, the second, the third one is which markets and which verticals are really driving uh, the need for edge computing. Uh, and then a big portion of my presentation will be spent around um, the alignment of open solutions, how they're coming together. Yeah, obviously security privacy is important. And then we will get into examples of use cases. And I would say early use cases that are coming in, in play uh, that really differentiate uh, you know, uh, the solutions that uh, are needed specifically from uh, you know, a traditional centralized cloud computing solution. So, uh, <laughs> and then I just put one for the sake of it because you know, how do you solve these challenge? Uh, how do you solve these challenges itself is a challenge. Um, so let's go to the definition, okay? So this was uh, last six months, uh, what is an edge was a big, big issue. And I think what, what has happened is um, we have uh, what is called the glossary project uh, that that has been uh, hosted by the Linux Foundation. It's a Wikipedia style definition of the terms. And uh, most of these um, terms have been created by the community, by the industry. And, and, and what we wanna do is make sure that the community is aligned with a simple uh, definition. We, know, we all know what it means. And so let me show you a couple of slides from that, that initiative and, and what it means uh, to the edge community. So in a simple diagram like this, you have um, you know, on the left top, you have an enterprise IoT type and edge. You, know, you could have microcontrollers there, you could have gateways there. Uh, the equivalent of that you could have on the home edge side of things. Uh, coming into either some version of an enterprise or if you're talking uh, 5G and radio, you know, coming through a base station into a smart central office, which typically gets, uh, is under the ownership of Delco Edge. Um, and then, you know, obviously edge enabled apps go all the way from, you know, left to right or right to left. And again, the key thing I want to emphasize here is, you know, not all IoT is edge enabled. So if a sensor is waking up and dumping data into a centralized cloud every week, that's not an app or that's not uh, edge. Um, uh, and, and the same way, you know, not all networking is edge and not all edge is networking. So, you know, you've got to sort of realize where the boundaries are. But what we have seen across the community are three um, important uh, metrics, right? Uh, obviously the proximity, uh, and again, measured by distance and kilometers of having compute and storage next to an application is, is critical. But what is more critical is the responsiveness needed by the app. And the industry experts are sort of zooming in on the five to 20 milliseconds of latency for an application. Uh, and then the third aspect on why edge is so important now is, is providing mobility for new applications, right? Whether they are connected cars or drones or any of these kind of devices. Uh, so that's kind of where we are in terms of uh, a, a definition. And then as we get into more details of uh, the physical and logical aspects of these, um, you can see that the terminologies we are using under under the open uh, uh, open source uh, banner are really uh, into two macro buckets. There's a device edge, and there's many types of devices, right? Whether it's an IoT, a microcontroller, a car, or a CP, or a gateway, right? And then there's the infrastructure edge, right? Whether it's under the base station, it's at the enterprise, or it's at a smart central office. And so these are broad categories. We are not going to include you know, regional data centers or even centralized data centers that are hundreds and thousands of kilometers away as part of edge computing, primarily because the latency factors are not included here. Okay. So that's number one. Uh, number two uh, is the heterogeneous uh, nature of the technology uh, and then the killer apps that are important. So 
as we go through the technology, I would point your attention to the bottom of the screen. Uh, I have listed five technology elements that are coming to market um, and they are all ready for prime time. And these technologies form the basis of, um, uh, of driving these applications and, and uh, demanding you know, lower latency and accelerated processing. So I'll go through uh, each of these in a little bit more detail. Uh, 5G obviously is um, the key technology that drives extremely low latency. Uh, it's obviously uh, after 4G and, and, and it's coming coming in fruition as we speak in 2020. So that's an important technology. Uh, microservices um, and container technologies uh, really are becoming mature. Uh, the main purpose of that is really to allow for portable apps that can sit in any parts of the, of the ecosystem. Um, AI is becoming very important and you now have uh, the ability to run intelligent uh, algorithms, machine learning tools, very close to the applications, um, and and that you know uh, allows for things like predictive maintenance of machines, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, we're 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 seeing a lot of good progress on hardware acceleration close to the applications, right? TPU, GPU, NPU, uh, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And then I th think the last piece but very important is the telco or telecom centric um, on-demand NFV. NFV stands for network function virtualization. And then of course, VNF stands for virtual network functions. So these are what I would say telecom applications um, and functions uh, that are important in the edge community space. Uh, and what's happening is the entire telecom network from being extremely proprietary and rigid is moving to uh, an open source based dynamic network, which allows for compute storage and network resources to be available to these applications close to them through an edge compute stack. And we'll talk about this in a bit. So these are the technologies, they all need to work together. And then what needs to happen also is uh, the the set of applications that are coming up, uh, which are listed on the top, whether it's uh, uh, you know telco type applications at the edge, or autonomous devices, or immersive experiences, or just straight IoT, uh, they all uh, need to be utilizing common you know frameworks and common lifecycle management things versus each of these. Uh, industries going off on their own. So those are what I would say technology and emerging app challenges. And we we have, you know, several analysts uh, firms that are now trying to get a handle around what are the killer apps. And, you know, some of the early survey obviously are showing, uh, you know, these uh, types of applications that are important to deployment and to the edge compute world. If I summarize these applications, then I would say, you know, they've broadly fall in two big categories. They are number one, non-traditional video. So it's not about the YouTubes of the world, if you may. Uh, things that come in from drones or things are like 360 video and, you know, uh, events and things like that. And then connected things that move, right? So these are not phones but they could be uh, you know, a lot of gaming things, they could be uh, cars, they could be vehicles, et cetera. Uh, and, then, and, and then a lot of it also is part of uh, services needed by an IIoT or an automated factory inside. So again, early days of killer apps, but an ecosystem is emerging to figure out you know, where things are. Um, and, and this was uh, done early on in 2017. We are expecting uh, part two and part three of this to happen in 2020. Uh, but we just wanted to let you know where it start, started and, and what kind of uh, applications are, are, are emerging. And as you will see, some of the use cases reflect this. So this is quite accurate from that perspective. That was number two, which is technologies and killer apps. The third big challenge is the market readiness. Uh, and this is where I think um, there is a little bit of uh, diversification or divergence, I would say. And, and, and I want to point out that we have uh, taken feedback from our community and our members and a lot of uh, analysts as well. And we've ended up with this linear list of priorities based on what we see as the 
biggest use cases, right? And, you know, I hate to prioritize it in a linear manner, but then people normally ask, you know, why linear? And, and, and it's, it's really a function of which industries can utilize the advantage of compute and storage close to them and save a lot of costs or make a lot of money uh, with, uh, with the services, right? And effectively industrial manufacturing is, is on the top, oil and gas is next, commerce, retail, home, automotive fleet, et cetera. You know, so this is kind of the, 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 the initial focus. Uh, the other industries are extremely important, but because of obviously, you know, policies, regulations, um, these markets may be slow to move, but um, obviously important to the edge ecosystem. Okay. I'll pick just um, one question on that. So we had a question from Paolo who's who asking, uh, can multimodal conversational multi-experience user interfaces be part of the use cases driving edge? So I guess, you know, home in particular would drive that. And so yes. But, but do you yes. see that as an edge use case? Uh, yes, we do. And this is where I think the, um, the user interfaces and the APIs definition is a big part of the application frameworks that we are focusing on. So absolutely a uh, good question and good, good input. Excellent. Yeah, good. Thank you. All right. And then I have one marketing slide here. So, you know, I'm going to skip this very quickly. If developers on, are on the call, you know, bear with me. But from several analysts here and the sources cited here, uh, Edge is really four times the size of the cloud, right? So if you missed the cloud revolution, you know, don't worry, join the edge revolution and you know we're going to hit a four trillion economy uh you know in the next uh, several years so just keep an eye on the edge i know you're interested in edge and you, that's why you have joined so you know there is data to validate your interest all right so let's get to the meat of of the presentation which is you know great it's important the technologies are there uh you know killer apps are coming up um and and markets are ready to take advantage of this so how do you solve these and how do you solve it in an open manner? And not just from a software perspective, but also from a testing and interoperability perspective, because you know, we have seen diverse solutions from you know, apps to devices, to infrastructure, to cloud. We have seen um, you know, frameworks that are needed that are different. We've seen APIs and user interfaces, which was the previous question that are different. Uh, Lifecycle management has been different, right? Um, and then, of course, each of these markets, whether it's telco, IoT, cloud, or enterprise, they have their view of the edge compute framework. So let me walk you through what we are doing and how we see these things. Uh, so the diagram I showed you earlier, um, what we have done at LF and the, the, the foundation is called you know, LF Edge. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar with this, uh, we, are, we just launched last year. And we've had you know, pretty good momentum on that, but we have uh, about seven projects that are part of LF Edge. Um, I'll start off with uh, the top left uh, project called EVE. It's a contribution from a, a Silicon Valley startup called Zedera. Uh, it's really focusing on the on-prem edge uh, and, and sort of virtualizing that. Uh, the equivalent of that, which is a home edge, that's a Samsung contribution. Um, and, and, and kind of, uh, the, you know, again, seed code is, is on the wiki there. Uh, then then uh, the anchor project here uh, called EdgeX Foundry, that's an IoT interoperability framework. And then in constrained environments, you know, you have uh, Fledge, which I'll walk you through as well in some, of, some more details. And then another anchor project is called Acrano Edge Stack. So what Acrano as an open source project brings is it brings two two use cases or two things to the table. It brings obviously the telecom use cases, but it also brings a set of blueprints, uh, which I'll walk you through uh, later in, in the use case section. Uh, and, and then we have um, a project called Beetle, uh, which is a you know, Baidu contribution for, for connecting cloud to edge. So again, quite a diversified set of projects. And um, you know, most of them are focusing on what we call uh, device edge and infrastructure edge. Uh, and this is a logical representation of that same diagram, all the way, you know, x-axis is really the, the location, and then y-axis is around uh, the stack itself. 
Um, and so if you look at a Crano, Eve, or Home Edge, these are infrastructure projects. The rest of them are application projects. So, you know, application framework projects in terms of uh, operational interoperability. And then we have this edge computing glossary project, which as I mentioned in the front is a Wikipedia style definition. So, you know, just like, just like open source, you can do a pull request on the glossary and sort of edit any definitions you want, add, delete, whatever, right? We want the market to collectively define what edge computing is uh, versus, you know, one or two smart people or smart analysts saying that, right? Let's, let's make it all happen together. Then if you look at it from a cloud perspective, um, you could see that the ecosystems for each of these clouds are kind of isolated. So if you have an IoT asset, uh, you know, you're in one of these systems and what uh, the request or what some of the uh, help we need from the community and we are working together with the, all of these community players is to horizontalize this so that the industries that can benefit from that, you know, manufacturing going across the globe or, or any of the other verticals going across the globe can have visibility and control across clouds. Okay, so a lot of good momentum on, on that. And then we all recognize that um, edge is not to be viewed in isolation of other open source projects. So this is kind of putting it in perspective of the rest of the ecosystem. So, you know, there's, there's initiatives like ORAN on the network side that opens up the radio interface. There's initiatives on the core side for automation called ONAP uh, that automates zero touch uh, all the way through the edge compute. Uh, and then obviously there's cloud projects, you know, like uh, Kubernetes and OpenStack of, you know, and, and AI projects like Acumos that are all part of the, of the integrated solutions in, in the open world. And then of course there's standard organizations that we collaborate very closely with, whether it's at CMEC, uh, Automotive Edge Computing or IIC or, or even GSMA uh, that help us, um, you know, solve this problem now. Um, if you are interested in deep dive on any of these, um, the event coming up uh, shortly is called ONES, Open Networking and Edge Summit. Uh, it's in LA. Uh, it's, it's kind of the most uh, interesting place to be to uh, discuss this with, uh, with, uh, with your peers and, and how to solve these problems. So that's kind of the you know, solution aspect of how do you harmonize the community, which is you know, try and unify frameworks across these markets while keeping it uh, open and interoperable, uh, independent of hardware, silicon OS or protocols. I mean, we all know there's 140 protocols that come in, you know, messaging protocols. There's like 50 ways you can come in and that's all fine. That's all optimized for, uh, for the market, et cetera. Um, all right, so let me go into, you know, the, the, the next topic or next challenge, which, you know, again, is, is important, not just for edge, but in general. And I would probably say, you know, one simple thing on this, right, is there is no uh, silver bullet here. There's no one solution. There's no one answer for this. Uh, but what I would like to lay out is the, the problem statement here, right? Because as we get into the edge, uh, we, have, we start seeing a lot of diversity and complexity on the on-prem uh, equipment, right? Um, and again, you got to make it agnostic to the hardware, agnostic to the network, agnostic to the APIs, as, as we had discussed. And so edge is diverse. Uh, we lose the perimeter security control and we lose the, uh, uh, the centralization. So this is now, you know, location and node scale becomes very important. And so some of the solutions that for security that have always I wouldn't say work, but have been applied to the rest of the IT community uh, historically, whether it's SIMS, you know, DDoS, IDS, IPS, firewalls, authentication, you know, encryption, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, you know, they are all relevant here, but they are absolutely challenged because of uh, a few factors that are unique to the edge. So the first one is obviously the connectivity drops. Um, there is no guarantee that a device will always be connected to the network. You know, there could be uh, on purpose, they would shut down to save, you know, battery or, or power. They could, they could be in a remote isolated, you know, turbine somewhere that doesn't have connectivity. I mean, there's a lot of things that can happen. Uh, there is also, you know, physical isolation, as I call it, right? These, some of these devices are fairly small and they have uh, uh, a potential of getting physically 
uh, stolen or or lost or or misplaced, etc. Right. So so they are more prone to uh, to a security risk versus like a centralized data center which has you know physical security inbuilt. Uh, then. If you want to solve these problems, you cannot have like a virtual firewall or a virtual IDS IPS running on this. Um, again, it's not going to fit. Uh, there's limited resources, memory, compute, etc. Uh, and then, of course, you know, magnify this by the number of uh, devices and billions and connectivity that needs to happen. So, again, I would claim that this is early in the discussion and these these are unique to the edge paradigm, these challenges. Um, the solution obviously is, is, is a variety of these uh, factors of impacted. Um, and my, uh, you know, our, our, our recommendation is really every aspect of security needs to go through uh, and relooked at. Um, and, and most of these projects that, that are focused on edge are directly addressing it, right? Whether it's isolation, whether it's uh, booting, whether it's uh, logging, uh, or whether it's, you know, attacks and DDoS attacks, right? So, um, you know, if a device reboots, you know, is it the no best known configuration right now? Eve is in the forefront of this, you know, because they have the most impact on, on the remoteness. Uh, so if you need more details, definitely look at it. But all of these projects have taken security as a, uh, not as an add-on feature, but an in integral part of driving uh, the design principles. Okay. The next big topic is, okay, so what are their use cases and where are we going to make money? And this is uh, quite a lengthy section, so I'm not going to go through each and every slide or each and every use case. Um, but if you look at the first one of the, and I'm going to go project by project uh, as, as we pull it together. So as I said, Acrano uh, is bringing two things. It's bringing obviously the telecom blueprints, but it is also, uh, sorry, telecom use cases, but it is also bringing together what is called um, a set of blueprints. Now blueprints are declarative configurations that solve a particular use case in that particular environment. And so here are some examples of blueprints that have been released. Uh, Acrino is on its second release, obviously. I'll show you a few of them in detail. I won't go through each of these, but for the specific location of the network, right? Whether you have you know, six servers that can handle a full edge stack or you have a, single server that could be used for multiple purposes to all the way down to you know very limited resources uh, you have these different types of blueprints right and um, and and they cover everything from you know gateways to a radio edge cloud to provider access edge to all the way to a network cloud or a smart central office and then we've started releasing some of the newer blueprints around you know connected vehicles or AR VR for for the integrated edge cloud so let me let me not spend too much time on this details slide I mean clearly these slides will be available so you can take a look at it this is meant for reading uh, but these blueprints um, uh, they have a family right so network cloud think of it this way everything that a telecom provider uh, or an enterprise could do in the core networks now can be pushed to the edge with a touch of a button and you can do it in a large size small size you can do it with different types of data plane acceleration kits using open source and uh, you know this seed code of this came from AT&T so we're really excited to sort of have this as part of release two as well uh, then you have a telco appliance which is again how do you uh, you know how do you put a open source code that can run edge applications below a base station and that's kind of you know again an, a nokia at t contribution but that's kind of where things are there and then you have a whole bunch of other uh, integrated edge clouds starling x a lot of kubernetes blueprints uh, as well as iot gateway blueprints uh, that again you can look it up on the on the website which i'll point to at the very end i want to point to our attention to two blueprints that were just released and they're kind of quite cool because they really amplify the um, edge capabilities. The first one is a connected vehicle blueprint. So if you look at you know, what's happening uh, here, as vehicles take advantage of not just the, the 4G but the 5G capabilities, uh, you can actually augment your experience, whether it's you know, location accuracy, 
uh, smarter navigation of real time, you know, getting the latency down to seconds even for them, uh, driver improvements, traffic violation alerts. There's a whole bunch of things that you can do uh, when a vehicle is connected and when compute and storage is available uh, for a connected car closer to them versus sending data to a centralized uh, centralized uh, server. So this is an excellent blueprint. Uh, you know, we're, uh, it, it is available now. Another one that, um, you know, I find it very fascinating is uh, AR, VR oriented at stack where you actually kind of, kind of get, um, and, and again, the use case that is really uh, help, uh, be, uh, using this, this blueprint is around a virtual classroom where you have um, AR, VR facilities uh, taking advantage of this edge stack where it includes, you know, online education, you know, identifying students, their behavior, visual recognitions, um, and security challenges. So there's a lot of uh, uses, usages of this blueprint, but I just wanted to throw a few examples to just stimulate your, your thinking on the possibilities that exist because you have the edge available right at, at your uh, fingertips, literally, okay? Then we'll, let's move to Edgex. So as you know, Edgex is the, Edgex Foundry is um, again, commercially ready, deployment ready, uh, one of the anchor projects along with Acrano. Um, and it, it gives you the IoT framework for lifecycle management. And again, uh, here's a few examples. So you have building automation, uh, you know, collect analytics, control, cloud integration, things like that for, for buildings. Uh, you have industrial and process control uh, where, you know, things like SCADA and cloud, you know, connectivity back into the platform through, um, through a bunch of hardware uh, in, in the, in, uh, you know, industrial process and PLC lifecycle. Very important use case in, in our mind. Um, you have smart city water treatment use cases. Um, and again, by the way, you know, I'm not gonna go through all of them in detail, just to give you a flavor of the type of um, edge computing use cases that have started surfacing, uh, you know, in our community and actively being deployed in cities. Uh, you have uh, a very important use case for retail, uh, which again, jointly is done as part of the open retail initiative uh, with, with Intel. Um, but think of it this way, you know, all the online experiences you have on shopping um, that, that, uh, that, you know, the, the cloud and the retailers online give us, um, why can't we have the same experiences in a physical store, right? And I think that's what they're working on in terms of applications, you know, things like people counting, line estimation, shift management, stock control, point of sales, et cetera, et cetera, that all can be managed uh, into a simple uh, uh, blueprint use case under EdgeX Foundry. Uh, you have uh, the IIC testbed um, uh, that, that is, again, focused primarily on manufacturing or optimizing the manufacturing process. Uh, that uh, at, that leverages EdgeX Foundry as well uh, from a framework perspective. So, uh, you know, again, these are just some examples. Uh, I talked about the EVE or uh, on-prem IoT gateway. Uh, here's some more architecture details. Um, again, abstracted hardware on the southbound side, uh, but then, you know, you have a lightweight networking uh, agent. You have a manager, orchestrator, sort of a self-contained lightweight um, simple hyper hypervisor, you know, I think we're using Zen, but doesn't have to be Zen related. Uh, but the code is available, you know, take a look at it. It's, it's kind of getting a lot of traction here as well. Then you get to Beetle. Again, as I said, this is a cloud to edge project for uh, the application frameworks. Um, obviously, uh, we, we've had some very good interest here from, from our China colleagues and, and a lot of uh, interesting architectural simplicity, if you may, that allows the cloud players to push and and support this. Uh, you know, let's say whether it's in a Baidu or whatever, uh, and then you can do it right from an open framework right there. And you have, you know, you have, and you have the next project, which is Fledge, as I said, uh, you know, framework for very constrained environment. Um, and and so if you look at the Fledge use cases. Um, 
and you will see a theme here, right? So you have industrial applications that are coming up. Uh, there's integration with TensorFlow and Google Cloud, obviously with Fledge. Um, and then you have um, predictive maintenance for turbines, right? Again, very constrained environment. Um, you know, how do you, how do you uh, save it versus, um, you know, fix it? Um, then you have it in energy, you know, you've got, uh, you know, chemical totes that need to be replaced. Again, same, same kind of uh, constrained environment that we are seeing, uh, you know, dynamic, or as I saw some of these, um, uh, you know, again, they, the donation came from there, but very, very important uh, uh, partners of ours. Uh, then you have, you know, monitoring and maintenance of transformers right there, right? Uh, where, uh, it, you know, pumps and fans and things like that. I mean, for those of you on the call who are IoT experts, you know, they would appreciate the, the complexity of the problem and then the simplicity of the solution here as well. Um, and then you have obviously transformers that need, uh, need to be uh, handled uh, you know, in, in the energy sector, in the municipal water sector, pumps, et cetera, et cetera, mining sector, et cetera. So you can see that, you know, as we get into more constrained environments, right, uh, you know, Fledge is, is kind of helping out with that framework um, and, 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 and kind of moving on quite well. Um, and then you have the next project, which is Home Edge. Home Edge. As I said, this is a Samsung contribution. And the problem here is very simple. And the use cases, I've shown a couple, but there's a lot more, which is today in the home, you have a whole bunch of devices, uh, you know, including cameras and security feeds and, uh, you know, TVs and gateways and, you know, nests and rings and whatever you want to call it. And, and, and the APIs are kind of getting different. The uh, lifecycle management is getting different. Think of it this way. Why should, why should a device you know, start differently, stop differently, boot differently, reload differently. You know, this is what I call the boring part of software that we all spend a lot of energy on and those are prime candidates for open source software, okay? So here's a use case for Home Edge. It's, you know, anomaly detection. You've got the camera feeding into any of these devices. You can classify it, you can offload it, you can alert it, you can kind of uh, do a lot of things with it. Uh, this was, by the way, presented at uh, the IoT uh, booth uh, and, and it's you know, pretty well received. It's just one example, there's a lot more alignment and a lot more use cases coming in the second release. So I wanna sort of emphasize that as well. And then finally, you know, as we go through these use cases, you know, I'd love to challenge you on all these um, use cases in terms of, you know, if you find any new ones that you would want to contribute to the community, you know, please do so. Um, I would probably, uh, you know, let me just check on a couple of questions that have come through before we get into the last section. Um, the, there's one question uh, that says, how does Eve and Ajax complement each other? So there is a uh, there is a blueprint that that has uh, you know Ajax running as an app on the Eve framework as well, um, and and they are quite complementary. So I can probably offline provide you more details on that. Um, uh, oh, that then it's just a question. All right. So the last one, which I want to leave plenty of time for Q and A, is you know these challenges are very normal for any growing new market that has tremendous potential. And my ask, at least from the Linux Foundation Edge and, and, and um, communities that are relying on us is please get involved. Um, there is no one right answer, okay? We don't know all the answers. Um, don't fragment markets or the community. Right. We, uh, as you can see, we proactively work very closely with our colleagues in the different communities, whether it's Etsy, ACC, uh, you know, uh, IIC, etc. Uh, and and we want to make sure that you know we are building solutions towards uh, the end users in mind and the end deployments in mind. Uh, there is no one right answer, uh, so we can collectively get there. Um, so, so please join, please uh, participate. Uh, if you need to get involved, uh, three simple steps, you know, get a Linux Foundation ID very quickly. Uh, you know, again, 
uh, we, we, we value your input there. Just visit the wikis, uh, lfedge.org in this instance. And then you can do a variety of things here. You can subscribe to mailing lists, ask questions, contribute code, attend project meetings, developer events, right? And if you really want to influence, you know, become a member of LF Edge. You know, it's fairly uh, important that you know we get all the support from the community as well. Um, all right, so that's kind of my uh, formal presentation. I'm gonna go through the questions and um, uh, start answering them. There are a couple already coming in. I'd like to echo what um, what Gavin said is, you know, if you have a question, please add it to the Q&A or the chat and we will be monitoring them. Uh, there's a, uh, Gavin, you wanna add yeah. anything? Yeah. I'm seeing two questions. No, that, 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 that's fantastic, yeah, thanks. It's very uh, fascinating presentation and great detail in there. I mean, if I just start picking off some of these questions, we've got a questions from, from Chuck Byers, who's a CTO at the Industrial Internet Consortium, so one of the organizations that you referenced there. Um, so, uh, and he's saying, do these solutions support high reliability to support mission life critical applications? Uh, some of the blueprints do. Uh, some of them do not have the memory or compute or the physical connectivity to have a high, re high reliability redundant solution. So based on the verticals, um, uh, we have seen several of these to be uh, redundant, extremely highly reliable uh, solutions as well. So yeah, I think it's it's a question of which markets and which solutions and which blueprints. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So a question from Dave, uh, what standard do the blueprints follow? So is that Tosco or something else? Uh, so the uh, the at least on from the uh, blue some of the blueprints specifically around Ecrano, uh, both Heat and Tosca I guess are coming from a zero touch networking side of things. Uh, so so both are connected. Uh, both are useful. Um, the uh, specific standards that need to be implemented when uh, at the at the periphery, uh, we will be working and we will be implementing standards, you know, whether it's a, a Mac play or, or some of the IIC uh, details, uh, we work, we're going to follow those uh, as we get to it. Now, uh, a call to action for those of you who are on the call and believe that we're missing uh, uh, collaboration with some other standards community, please drop me an email, you know, again, ajashapura at linuxfoundation.org. Uh, and I will, I'll be glad to approach them and, and have a collaborative partnerships on that as well, because I know there's like tens and hundreds of standards. Um, most of the telecom networks we have, we are covered, most of the industrial we are covered, but uh, I'm sure there's, uh, there's uh, organizations we have missed, so please let us know. And then of course, consortiums by vertical have started uh, popping up. I mean, obviously AECC is the big one uh, from an automotive perspective, but mm -hmm. I'm sure there are others. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so there's a question here from Siegfried about um, residential CP devices. Uh, so he says there's, there's a growing need for deep learning frameworks that, that frameworks that can benefit edge compute, uh, also to make devices more independent from the cloud for privacy reasons, as well as making sure it's still working when the network is down. So Greengrass from Amazon seems like an interesting solution for this. Um, and notice he notes that it's integrated somehow into this framework. Uh, but there is a is there also a more open solution? Uh, to Amazon Green Cross that would allow uh, to remain cloud vendor independent? Uh, so that's actually a very good question. As I said in my first uh, few slides, uh, I completely agree that the residential CP devices, and I would even say, you know, enterprise CP or UCP, right, that, that we call it, uh, both now have not just, not only the hardware, but the cost points to allow for um, some of these deep learning frameworks to be embedded, whether it's in a chip or it's in a software, right on-prem, okay? And um, both the, specifically if this question is around residential framework, uh, I think I do want to point out, uh, it was in one of the diagrams right here. So if you look at, if you look at, uh, if you look at the uh, home edge project, uh, the model interface, the partitioning converter, both the scheduler and the executor. So integration with, obviously, we're not going to do the full TensorFlow type uh, framework, uh, but absolutely get uh, connectivity from that so that 
you can have it done at the gateway itself when there is no network connectivity. So yes, the answer is, the simple answer is we are going and, and implementing and that's absolutely the direction the community is taking for that solution, which again is an open solution uh, and, and cloud vendor independent. Okay, a uh, question from Bruce. So how does ambient intelligent environments uh, connect with the edge model? You see that, how, how, does, how do am ambient intelligent environments connect uh, with the edge model? Yeah, so that one I will have to, oh, I'll have to look at it. I don't have an yeah. answer for that, sorry. Yeah, yeah, no problem. Uh, we can come back to you, Bruce, on, on that perhaps. Um, and then, uh, so Mark Fishburne is asking about uh, if we have any comment on the broadband forums TR348, uh, Cloud Central Office Reference Architectural Model, which defines edge compute networks and abstraction models, use case and standards, um, proof of concepts being implemented are telcos. Uh, do you have a view on that? Uh, I, would, I would say the Acrino TSC is taking a look at it. So please, if you are not already participating, bring it up and uh, and, and, and go down that route, uh, absolutely critical. Uh, you know, while the team has not looked at all the TRs, um, they are all relevant in that. Plus there is also the home edge, right, from a, uh, you know, I forget the numbers, 303 or 58 or something like that. So some of that are being looked at uh, mm -hmm. as, as a support for the back end. yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, question, question from Projit. So, uh, what are your thoughts on LFH's advantage for the MEC blueprint, uh, Mobile Computing Blueprint, over the other offerings in the marketplace? Do you have a view on that, uh, Arpi? Okay, so, you know, we are here in the open source world. It's, we are not a vendor, so mm -hmm. we're not going to do a competitive advantage but at the same time take a look at it uh, the big the, the at the high level the advantage is basically you don't have to worry about open source versus open standards right um, the collaboration we have with etsy is such that if a standard you know and i'll, I'll make it a generic statement here if, if a standard exists code it if a standard does not exist, code it and upstream into a standard uh, so that when you actually get to a deployment, it is a standard based and you're not fragmented mm -hmm. in the mm -hmm. community. So it's, it's kind of, that's the philosophy. Um, um, you know, I, 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 I won't go into the specifics of why one is better than the other or whatever. Yeah, no, fair enough. Yeah. Um, we had a question from JJ earlier. Um, so he was asking, is IPFS, I have to say that's one I'm, I'm not familiar with, but is that part of edge computing? Are you familiar with that one? Uh, I am not, uh, but we can take a look at it. Yeah, yeah. So that's not one that I, I've crossed into personally. Um, so you were um, saying earlier that you obviously encourage everyone to participate. Are there any particular areas of the ecosystem that you uh, would particularly to encourage uh, to join in the uh, the conversation that takes place. In I, I would say there is uh, there is three things I would and again depending on your company and your uh, background and and your interest. Uh, there is definitely uh, quote you know joint if your if your company is part of Edge and you're not a member of LF Edge, that's one simple thing you can do. And once you do that, you know you get all the ecosystem, you're part of the club, then you're sort of looking at most of the, your peers to help solve common problems. And again, these are non-differentiated common problems so that you don't have to invest yourself and, and, and solve it. That's number one. Number two, you can go and um, participate in the technical forums and technical discussions as a, if you're a developer. So, you know, that's, uh, that option is available. All of our projects are open. And they are, uh, you know, the code is open, documentation is open. It's all on the web and the wiki. So do participate and join the groups and and be part of the ecosystem. And then the third way I would say is, um, you know, join ONES, which is more of a face-to-face -face meeting your peers, discussing some of the hot topics. And as a, as a matter of fact, I think the call for papers is going on right now. Uh, so take a look at that, uh, you know, bring it up on the Linux Foundation website. Um, I think the deadline is February 2. So you have about a week or so to submit call for papers and have your thoughts presented at ONES. Uh, but that's kind of where, the where uh, you know, uh, 
technical people and business people will meet and you know move the industry forward so that's those are the three big things i would say okay one more question that's come in um how could one commercialize one of these blueprints uh, is that i'm not sure that's the intention of the blueprints but uh, i guess you know if someone's looking to to walk through from a blueprint to something they can turn into a product uh, what's the, yes what's the so so i think that's a very good question actually uh, because if you look at how we uh, how the how the ecosystem is evolving uh, it's like uh, you know we host projects uh, projects create uh, technology value code uh, the code then gets tested and automated and interrupt in the open source uh, framework which is what you know crino and blueprint uh, a crino blueprint program is doing and then they get productized supported deployed by vendors so that they can sell it and and make profits after it or training or customize it or whatever so clear answer is you know um, you you absolutely can uh, commercialize these blueprints um, and and as the uh, ecosystem starts uh, you know, solving the interoperability problem in the open source world, um, the time to market is even faster. So think of it this way. What would a typical end user do? They would take open source, then they would interoperate with other projects, other products, and then they would test it for interoperability, file the bugs, the vendors will go change things so that everything happens. That's a six to nine month process, right? By the time they get to deploy. Instead of that, we're moving this interoperability and this um, uh, integration, if you may, into the open, and we and the and the community and the vendors and members are sharing this integration with the rest of the folks, so that it, they can easily move the agenda and move the uh, uh, market forward in in very quickly. Okay, so you know, I know it's a long answer, but very important. Uh, absolutely, this is the way the market's heading. And if you've not already looked at the blueprints, please look at it and, and contribute as well. Fantastic. Okay, so thanks so, so much, uh, Arpit. Uh, if you can just take us to the, the next slide, please. I just wanted to remind everybody uh, about the forthcoming uh, webinars we have coming up. So uh, obviously next week we have uh, a deep dive into autonomous vehicles, uh, looking at the state of the industry uh, for the uh, first quarter of 2020, and that's with uh, Philippe, uh, our CEO, and, and Mark Amblard. And then on February 6th, we actually have uh, a close look at uh, the AI for the edge, uh, our landscape of that sector and uh, the update uh, that's coming out this quarter. And then looking further ahead, uh, we're looking at data platforms for the smart building industry with uh, our partner in Flux Data. So uh, plenty more to get your teeth into and, and, and more to learn about the specific areas of the edge and specific use cases, uh, if that's your interest. Um, and going to the next slide, please. Uh, also, just wanted to flag to everybody about the forthcoming Edge Computer World events. Uh, uh, our, our event last month in Santa Clara was a huge success, thanks uh, to, the, to all our supporters, including the, the Linux Foundation. Um, uh, the, uh, the US event that we run will be greatly expanded in, uh, in 2020, taking place in Santa Clara um, Convention Center with an expanded uh, conference, multiple vertical summits, uh, and also uh, a large exhibition floor uh, and we're also this year taking the event to Europe for the first time in July. We'll be uh, in Berlin on July 8th and 9th. And, for, and next slide please and finally just to remind you uh, there is an exit survey please do complete that, complete that exit, exit survey. We'd love to have your opinions and, and take your feedback uh, uh, for improving uh, our events uh, and also for uh, topics for further uh, webinars we'd love to have your ideas. Uh, and just one final reminder, so uh, this webinar is available for review. Uh, you'll be able to download the deck uh, and also review the, the video from early next week uh, on the topianetworks.com platform. So just to, to uh, wind up, thanks to all for your uh, participation. Thanks to all your, your fantastic questions. Uh, thanks to the Linux Foundation and, and RPD in particular for that really comprehensive presentation, really fascinating. and. Uh, Look forward to uh, uh, you joining our future webinars and looking forward to future uh, collaborations with the foundation. Thanks very much, RP. Thank you.